Adventures of the Saint, starring Vincent Price. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... The Saint. It's perfectly all right, Miss Ames. Oh, please don't go. I must. The police... All right, now at the scene of the crime, they'll take care of things. I can see you're in a hurry. Yes, I am. All right, driver, step on it. Yes, sir. Comfortable, Miss Ames? I don't know you, do I? An oversight on my part that can be easily remedied. I'm Simon Templer. Simon Templer? Yes. Oh, you're the saint, aren't you? Sometimes I feel as though I had a neon sign on my forehead. I'll confess the fatal appellation. Well, I think I'd better get out, Mr. Templer. You see, I've got... Saint is not synonymous with boogeyman, Miss Ames, and why not call me Simon? After all, we were both present at the unveiling of the court. If you think you're being funny, Mr. Templer... There's nothing funny about murder, particularly when as pretty a girl as you is involved. But I'm not involved. A question of semantics, Miss Ames. A man gets killed when you're within five feet of him and you turn tail and run. If that's not being involved, my dictionary lied to me. Well, I, I suppose you're right. It was foolish of me to run, but when I heard those shots and saw him fall, I... How did you know who I was? Such modesty is becoming, but hardly intelligent, Miss Ames. You're a star. Your show is opening in a week, and your pictures have been plastered all over town. Oh, of course, I should have known. Did you know the man who was shot at? Yes. Yes, I had an appointment with him. His name was Jim Barry. Oh, the publisher? Yes. Oh, I know him, or rather knew him. He's been kind enough to publish some scribblings of mine, but what were you going to see him about? Anything special? No, just a business talk. A business talk with a publisher? Don't tell me that Barry Kilgore Company is going to publish the story of your life. No, but Jim's firm was preparing an anthology of the modern theater, and he wanted to include the new play I'm going to be in. Down, Danny. Uh, down to the floor. I said down. <laughs> Somebody oh, doesn't like us, Betty. The driver of that car threw some hot lead our way. But how it was I don't Betty. know. I only saw the glint of a gun out of the corner of my eye. Hey, hey driver, are you a... Simon, is he dead? Wait out. Now, how do you like that? We get shot at and he faints. I don't blame him. I feel a well, little... don't, don't. You must be due at the theater for rehearsal about now and... The show must go on, though for the life of me, I've never been able to understand why. Hey, Joe, bring that soap and walk on stage. Okay, Larry. Here's my dressing room, son. Oh. You go in and wait for me. I'd have you watch the rehearsal from the wings, but Larry Stevens, our stage manager, is superstitious about it. Okay, Betty, but your sanctified watchdog will be panting on your threshold till you get back. After what's happened, Simon, I'll be glad to know you're close by. See you later. Yeah. Oh, well, might as well wait inside. But really, Vera, I don't know what you mean. I think you do, Helen. Just remember what I told you about Jim Barry, and you'll be... Uh, Simon Templer. What in the world are you doing here? Well, now that's what I call a quick switch. Vera Pangburn, lady novelist, gets stage struck. Or are you merely getting material for a novel about backstage? Work? Oh, no. No theater novels for me, Simon. Oh, let me introduce Helen Trask. Helen, this is Simon Templer. How do you do, Mr. Templer? As well as might be expected under the circumstances, Miss Trask. I'm not too accustomed to entering one lovely lady's dressing room and finding... Two others are waiting, me. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, Helen and I were waiting for Jim Barry. We thought he was coming here with Betty. Jim Barry? Oh, he's your publisher, isn't he, Vera? Yes, and Helen's, too. Helen's his really latest discovery. She has a new novel coming out. Well, 
I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed, ladies. Uh, Barry's been unexpectedly detained. Oh, oh, and I was so anxious to see you. Oh, why not let me substitute? I'm very good at parlor tricks and small talk. And Your name's Templer? Yes, it has been for a number of years. I can remember way back when my parents... What's the big idea of keeping the names away from rehearsal? Oh, did I? Who are you? Oh, uh, Stevens, the stage manager. That's eh? right, and I'm also the guy who doesn't like stage door John. Now, there's something about the way you said that that hurts me deeply. It, uh... Gee, what's that thing in the cuff of your trousers, Stevens? In the cuff of my trousers? Yeah, right here. Now, look here, Templer. I don't know what this is all about, Maybe but... you don't, but you should know a revolver cartridge when you see one. Revolver cartridge? Is that what this is? It is. Where's Betty Ames? Why, in rehearsal, I had them start. And I presume there's a shooting scene in this play? Why, yes, toward the end of the first act, but I... I... Well, you'll like me even less after this, but I'm stopping that rehearsal. But you can't do that, Temper. I don't. You'll have a dead star on your hand. Betty Ames, are you crazy? I hope so. I hear them. Where's the closest stage entrance? Over there, there to your left. I hope you know what you're doing. I'm afraid I do. They're at the shooting scene now. Stop it. Don't you... Apparently nothing, but I'm a little amazed at finding you all right. But why shouldn't I be silent? Now, there you have me. Quiet, quiet, everybody. Templer, I've had enough of this nonsense. You've held up the rehearsal by keeping Betty away, and now you've broken up the end of the first act. Either you get out of this theater, or I'll have you thrown out. You know, Stevens, I must be super sensitive. Why else would I get the idea that you don't like me? No, don't answer. There's something I want to do first. Uh, where's the gun your leading man fired just now, Betty? Well, it's over there on the floor, just a prop gun with blank cartridges. Blank cartridges? <laughs> so that's it. I've always wondered how people shot in plays had so many lives. <laughs> you mind if I take a look? What's all the commotion about? Oh, hello, Mr. Kilgore. We've been having a little trouble with a fellow named Templer, but everything's under control. Well, now. it better be. I've got quite an investment in the show, and the way it looks now, it'll flop before they get to the show. Now, now, there's nothing for you to get excited about, Mr. Kilgore. I assure you of that... Of that's all in the way one looks at it, Stevens. And I suggest that you look at this gun. I see it, Templer. So what? So this. I break it open. Son... Those aren't blank cartridges. They're real. Real? But that's impossible. Perhaps you'd better take a second look. But why would anyone in this theater substitute real bullets for the blank? Now, that is a puzzling question, Stevens. Of course, it couldn't possibly be that someone was interested in killing Betty Ames. Now, could it? understand how you knew Simon. Well, theatrical people may dress somewhat unconventionally, but I thought that Stevens with revolver cartridges in his trouser cuffs was going a bit overboard. Fortunately, your uh, leading man is a sensitive soul. <laughs> he jumped at least a foot when I shouted at him as he fired. Oh, if you hadn't startled him. Yeah, then I doubt that we'd be sitting here in your dressing room. But why should anyone want to kill me? Well, the usual motives are money, jealousy, and fear of discovery. But I'm not rich. And there's no reason for anyone being jealous of me, and I don't know a thing about anyone. Are you certain of that, Betty? Of course I am. You were pretty much in evidence when Jim Barry was killed. But so were a dozen other people. Yeah, but perhaps they didn't see what you saw. I didn't see anything. At the killing, perhaps. But what about, well, a familiar face in the crowd, for example? Familiar face? Mm. No. I... Oh, wait a minute, yes. Yes, I did see someone. May the eyes have it, you saw the killer. Who was it? Oh, that's just it. I don't know. Let me remind you that a familiar face belongs to someone you know or have seen before. Yes, I know that, Simon, but I just caught a flash of the face, and I was thinking it looked familiar and was starting to identify it in my mind, and then the shots were fired and Jim Barry was killed, and then it was gone. Mm. I don't suppose you got a similar flash among the people in the theater tonight? No. Might have been any one of them or none of them. Hardly what I'd call an elucidating statement. Let's put this together. Barry was the publisher for Vera Pangburn and Helen Trask, and both of them were in the theater. Mm -hmm. Kilgore, who put up the money for the show, was Barry's partner in the publishing business, and he was in the theater. Stevens, the stage manager... Had that cartridge in his cuff. Yes, he did, didn't he? So where does that get us, Simon? Exactly nowhere. Well, as my old grandmother used to say, if at first you don't succeed, try checking up on the corpse. <laughs> Come on, Betty. Let's go to the morgue. Son. Well, strangely enough, the morgue never was noted for being the most cheerful place in the world. Do you think your scheme will work? How optimistic can one man be? 
but it's quite a trap. Uh, looking for someone, Mr. Templer. <laughs> Hello there, Duncan. How are things? Things? Oh, they're pretty dead around here. <laughs> mm. Pretty dead. <laughs> Same jolly old soul, aren't you? Oh, I get my kicks, Mr. Templer. <laughs> How peachy for you. Feel jolly enough to do me a favor? Favor? Yeah. Did you get an advanced case of rigor mortis in here sometime this evening? A fellow by the name of Barry? Barry? Yeah. yeah sure did. Gun killing. Neat job, too. You want to see him? Oh, no. Oh, I bow to the lady, Duncan. But you know, I have a theory that every murdered man dies with exactly $11.63 in his pocket. You yeah? have? Mm -hmm. But how could that be, Mr. Templer? Let's look at his personal effects and see. Hey, Duncan? Personal effects? Yeah. Well, now, I ain't so sure I ought to. No, sir, I can't. You know the rules. Oh, of course. I'm sorry I mentioned it. Yep. But uh, Miss Ames was anxious to see if those opening night tickets to her new show, mm -hmm. uh, the ones in your name, that is, <laughs> could possibly have been lost around here somewhere. Oh. Uh, $11.63, you say? Mm -hmm. Well, that's an interesting theory, Mr. Templer. And we can't block the progress of science, can we? No, indeed. There you are. Take a look. Mm, wallet, jewelry, a couple of key rings. There's a couple of hundred bucks in the wallet. Smashes off theory all to tunk it, don't it? Is that all there was on him? Well, see for yourself. I told you that. Oh. Hey, hey, look out. Hey, grab it, Duncan. I'm going to faint you. Oh. Yeah, you're okay, miss. Okay, oh, I got thank you. Thank you, thank you. I, I don't know what happened. Suddenly everything turned black. All right, Betty, don't talk. I'll get you outside. Even an old ghoul like Duncan gets queasy in here sometimes. No, I don't either. You sure you're okay, miss? Yes, thank you. I'm all right now. Thanks very much, Mr. Duncan. Well, you're welcome. And, uh, <clears throat> Them opening night tickets in my name you lost? Oh, you'll find them at the box office in your name, Mr. Duncan. Well, I'm glad you folks dropped in. The first part of your scheme seemed to work all right, Simon. Well, I did get hold of Barry's keys, and thanks to the fainting act you stayed then, very realistic it was, too. <laughs> but there was little else of interest there. Then what goes on now? Then I might suggest that we halt right here in front of the office of Barry Kilgore and Company Publishers. Pick out a key that looks as though it fits the lock. Mm -hmm. And walk right in. <laughs> There, you see what skill, perseverance, and some petty larceny can accomplish? Now, where's Jim Barry's office? Do you know? Oh, yes. Right over there. Uh -huh. Kilgore's the one next to it. There's the light switch on the wall. You'll never make an understudy to a sneak thief by talking about lights, Betty. <laughs> My flashlight's enough. But I still don't understand what you expect to find up here, Simon. Neither do I, but I'm looking for motives. And what better place to find motives than in the dead man's private files? Mm -hmm. Let's start with this stuff on the desk. Well, those are only galley proofs of a book, Simon. Mm, so it would appear. What a fascinating title. My Heart's One Romance by Helen Trapp. Oh, no. Talk about <laughs> corn. No motive for murder there. I wonder. What do you mean? This inter-office memo clipped to it. Look at it. <laughs> for Pete's sake, Jim, stop publishing this kind of tripe before it ruins us. It's initialed K. K for Kilgore. What do you make of that, Simon? I think Kilgore didn't like the book. But if it's as bad as all that, why was Jim Barry publishing it? Maybe you'd better take another look at Helen Trask. Oh, you mean you think that Helen and Jim Barry I were... I prefer to keep an open and clean mind about these things. Oh. <laughs> but we do know Kilgore didn't like it. And Kilgore stands to get plenty now that Barry's dead. He'd become sole owner of the business. He... Simon, Simon, someone's coming to the outer office. That's very inconsiderate of him. But what if it's the police or Jim Barry's murderer? Your suggestions are very inconsiderate of you. What's he doing now, Simon? Not he. There are two people in the office. Are they coming in here? Mm. No, no, they've gone into Kilgore's office. Oh. They didn't turn on the light, so they must be familiar with the place. Uh, remind me to complain to the owners of this building. They've made these walls so soundproof, I can't even recognize the voices, let alone hear... Yeah. Yeah, we could hear those all right, couldn't we? I'll be right back. No, Simon, please! Oh! Oh, whoever it was got away. Simon, Simon, are you all right? I'll get a doctor. 
Doctor, I... Better make it a carpenter instead, Betty. Carpenter? Yeah, the shot's missed, but I certainly smashed up that desk I ran into. Let's find the lights and see how much damage was done. Does it now? Simon! The damage was quite extensive to Mr. Kilgore. Our chief suspect has been crossed off the list by a bullet between his eyes. home safe and sound, Simon. Mm. After what's gone on today, I'm beginning to wonder how that happened. Does uh, everything look to be in place? Yes, of course. Betty, it's a funny thing, but ever since my college prom days, I've had an abiding dislike for chaperones popping up unexpectedly. I'd uh, better look around. <laughs> well, look, don't let these modern inventions frighten you, Betty. The telephone oh, is quite on. My nerves are... I'll answer it. Good. Miss Vera Pangborn. She says she thinks she knows something about the Barry killing. Well, don't be piggish about things. Split the receiver with me and let me listen to you. Vera? What do you mean? Well, I, I don't know just how to explain it, Betty, but... Get away from that window! Vera! What is it? No! No, no! Vera! Vera! Are you still there? Simon, those were shots. What happened there? This may come as a tremendous surprise, Betty, but it sounds like Vera Pangborn just became murder victim number three. Use brawn instead of brains. <laughs> Ineffective, if not neat. Come on, let's go in. Simon, there she is. Yeah. On the floor. Uh, is she? She's luckier than Barry or Kilgore. Shot in the upper part of the arm. Uh, you better get some towels, Betty. I'll be right back, Simon. Good. Uh, well, what happened? Simon. Man. And the fire escape is shot at me. I'd be indignant about it too, Vera, but suppose we talk about it later. You huh? are, Simon. You better let me at it. Now, wait up. Oh. I'll, I'll lift her out oh. of the damn. Oh. There. Oh. Now, if you'll make like Florence Nightingale, Betty, I'll, I'd like to look at the fire escape. All right, Simon. Uh, Betty. Betty, I... Poor I... darling, time for talk later. Let's get you fixed up first. You just relax. Oh. Vera, we're here and everything's going to be all right. Oh. Thanks. The view from your fire escape is very disappointing, Vera. Only shattered glass out there. Did this homicidal friend of yours shoot through the window? Yes. I was talking on the phone to Betty. I, I looked up and saw him. He, he had a handkerchief over his face and he, he shot twice. There you are, Vera. And that'll hold you until we get it off. By the way, Vera, not that I'm curious or anything, but what was it you were going to tell Betty over the phone about Jim Barry's murder? I... I can't tell you, Simon. Well, I'll admit I'm not as pretty as Betty or his family. No, 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 I won't say anything. He's already shot at me once. I won't say anything. He'll kill me. Oh, He'll my kill dear, me. take it easy. You don't have to tell us anything. Simon, we better call a doctor. She's in no condition to be bothered now. Right now, neither am I. Suppose you take care of the medical details and then meet me at Helen's ask for At huh? Helen's? Yeah. Is that where you're going now? No, I'm going to Larry Stevens' place. And if that sounds confusing to you, it's no wonder. I'm a little confused myself. Yes. Hello, Stevens. You mind if I step inside? Templar, what in blazes are you doing here? I guess you do mind. Oh, well, uh, I have an invitation for you, Stevens, to come calling on Helen Trask with me. Helen Trask? Mm -hmm. Why should I go to her place? Oh, I thought it would be sweet if we all chewed over a few explanations together. You'll get no explanations from me. Now get out, Templar. Uh, okay, Stevens. But if you don't mind, I would like to leave you something first. Yes, what's that? This! You know something, Stevens? I think you're coming with me whether you want to or not. All right, now that Betty is here, we have a quorum. But I... 
I don't understand, Mr. Templer. Why are you all here at my apartment? There's no sense asking him, Helen. He's completely crazy. Stevens, I think you're prejudiced because your jaw still aches a little, hmm? Uh, Miss Trask, when I entered Betty's dressing room tonight, Vera was saying something to you about Jim Barry. What was it? Why, well, she was merely warning me against him that he had a weakness for young women writers. Well, in your case, that's understandable. Would you say his weakness could account for a rather poor manuscript being accepted? If you're insinuating anything, Mr. Temple... Oh, Helen, of course not. You didn't listen to Vera, did you? Naturally not. Mr. Barry always acted like a perfect gentleman. What are you driving at anyway, Templer? Well, I say I'm a perfectionist, Stevens. I don't like ragged details hanging over, and that snatch of conversation intrigued me. Something else intrigues me, too, that cartridge in the trouser cuff episode. Hmm. You really are determined to play Sherlock Holmes, aren't you? Well, if it'll relieve your mind, Annie, on my way to Betty's dressing room, I bumped into a prop table box of what I thought were blank cartridges spilled against me and onto the floor. Did you think that there might have been some loaded cartridges among the blanks and that one of them lodged in your cup? That's it exactly. A very simple explanation. Yeah, it's almost too simple. Did you try to check this theory of yours? Well, I tried to, but when I got back to the table, the box was gone. Which, of course, makes it even simpler. Uh, do you mind if I use your phone, Helen? Phone? Oh, I know. No, not at all. Hey, thanks. You calling the police, Simon? No, uh, Vera Pangman. Vera Pangborn. Mm, that's right. Hello? Oh, oh yes, doctor. Uh, how's Miss Pangborn? Oh, that's fine. Give her a message, will you please? Tell her Simon Templer called and she needn't worry about that killer any longer. Yes, that's right. Betty Ames has remembered who it was she saw at the scene of the murder, and that's all the evidence we need. <laughs> Simon, what is this all about? Beautiful here in the park, isn't it? You know very well that I haven't remembered the face I saw when Jim was killed. A brilliant moon, soft starlight, a perfect night for romance, and she talks about killing. Oh, please, Simon, please. What are we doing out here, anyway? <laughs> to take a cue from you, just killing time. And I think we've killed enough. Let's get going. Simon, for the last time, will you give me a direct answer? Where are we going? Oh, didn't I tell you, Betty? Why, I'm merely taking you home. Here's my door, Simon. I can find my way in alone. Don't you think the least I can do is to search the apartment for you again? No, that won't be necessary, thank you. Good night. Well, at least allow me to turn the lights on for you. There, are you satisfied? Now you can see for yourself that there's... Oh. Yes, I can see quite well. Hello, Vera. Up that door, Simon, quickly. I never argue with a lady, Vera, particularly when she's got a gun in her hand. That's better. I thought that phone call of yours might have been a trap, Simon, but I had to make sure. Now that you apparently have made sure, Vera? You and Betty are going to join the others. Simon! Tell me why you killed Jim Barry, Vera. Was he your husband? Pretty smart, aren't you, Simon? That's right. Jim was my husband. Yes, I thought so. Jealousy was the only motive I could figure for you. Every young woman who came along and thought she could write turned his head. <laughs> the Helen Trask. A high school girl could write a better book than she did. But Jim Barry was going to divorce you and marry her, wasn't he? Yes. And now Jim's dead. And Kilgore's dead because he suspected me. And you're going to die, too. Right now. No, you don't. Give me that. Oh, God, God, she's going to kill me. No, she isn't. Are you, Vera? No. No. Oh, Simon. Oh, Simon, I was so scared. You know something, Betty? So was I. I still don't understand, Simon. That business of Vera's being shot. Now, how did you know that she'd fake that? You know, Betty, that's one thing I always dislike about solving a murder. I have to explain things. But if you won't let well enough alone... No, Simon, I won't. All right. It was the glass and the fire escape. Uh, now shall we uh, get back to that moon? Simon, what about the glass? Oh, it came from the shattered window. And there was no glass within the room. Therefore, the shot was fired from within, scattering the glass outward. And who was inside the apartment at the time? Vera. Mm -hmm. We have achieved a meeting of the mind. 
Now, if we can carry that a bit further while discussing those lovely shimmering stars. But I heard two shots fired over the phone. Did she use the second one to give herself that flesh wound? If you were afraid someone was closing in, you'd make a last desperate attempt to throw suspicion elsewhere, wouldn't you? And she was the one who put the real bullets in the gun in the theater. Mm-hmm. And fired at me in the cab. <sighs> but Simon, why me? Well, I hate to get repetitious, but remember those motives for murder I listed? Money, jealousy, and fear of discovery. Yeah, let's latch on to the last one. She was afraid you'd remember that it was her familiar face you saw in the crowd just before Jim Bally was killed. You satisfied now? Well, almost. There's just one more little this, thing. Look, Betty... If it doesn't concern the moon, I'm not interested. All right, Simon. Get interested. You have been listening to another transcribed adventure of The Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. Now here's our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen... As good citizens, we have the entire sphere of American life in which to use our heritage. So let's make the affairs of our nation, state, and community our affairs. Remember that we all have a voice in them. Use that voice and use it well and often. Only then can we set an example of freedom, knowing that our own American heritage is secure. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at this same time for another exciting adventure of the saint. Good night. written by Sidney Marshall. Our cast included Francis Cheney, Barbara Eiler, Eleanor Audley, Frank Gerstle, Stanley Farrar, and Arthur Q. Bryan. Music was composed and conducted by Von Dexter. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charters, is a James L. Safier production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is soon to be seen co-starring in RKO's production of His Kind of Woman. All you Saint fans will be glad to know that the Saint comic books are on sale at all newsstands. Your announcer is Don Stanley. Programs, get your programs here. Following now on NBC are two stellar programs you'll want to stay tuned for. Listen next for another exciting adventure mystery on the adventures of Sam Spade. Then hear the NBC Symphony's summer concert with guest artists Helen Traubel and Vladimir Goldschmidt. And congratulations to station WWJ Detroit on this, their 30th anniversary.